Mary Willis, and I'm a professor in the Department of Nutrition and Health Sciences, and I am currently a Doherty Water for Food Institute faculty fellow. I am Sagay Tadessa, I'm a climatologist and a remote sensing expert at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and a Doherty Water for Food Institute faculty fellow. I am Shimelis Bayene and I'm an anthropologist at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and Doherty Water for Food Institute faculty fellow. I am Tashoma Ragasa and I'm an agronomist at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and a Doherty Water for Food Institute faculty fellow. I am Marta Memo and I am a soil scientist at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and a Doherty Water for Food Institute faculty fellow. Women are primarily connected with water they do, they are watching, you know, fetching water for domestic use and cooking and, and everything else. So in most places, especially out of the rainy season, water is very, very scarce. So people they have to carry it from the rivers, they have to, uh, you know, as you can see here, wash their clothes, you know, here we throw into the lawn. <laughs> And that's it. But also this is a place where socialization takes, takes over. Young kids like this and, with, and women among themselves get a chance to talk about gossip. This area is in Wallo, one of the areas recurrent drought really strike uh, uh, that area for so many years. To my surprise, a few meters, about five, ten meters below, there is a groundwater. So people are dying because of the scarcity of water, which is just a few meters below their feet. I would say it's just beautiful scenery. The, 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 you know, the countryside is lovely. I like the look of rural farms and, and agriculture in general. There aren't much jobs other than farming, and farming employs about 85% of the population. These areas have certainly multiple challenges. Natural resource degradation, that includes less available nutrient in the soil for plant growth. So that, in addition to the limitation of water, you have the limitation of soil nutrients. In most of the places where we work, uh, the household landhold size is uh, less than one hectare. So it's very, very small. What that means is that in a small piece of land, you have different uh, people. And sometimes it can have you know challenge in terms of management because uh, people may have different interests. The reason why you have to talk to the farmers and the farm families is you have to understand actually what they want. We allowed and gave each individual a sense of where they were, gave them the measurements and the weight. Certainly the children enjoyed the, uh, the interactions. They are um, eager to uh, know about their health and to think about ways to improve. But we are also trying to understand from the people's perspective, you know, what are their coping mechanisms? And, and what can, you know, make their coping mechanism more effective? When I was talking to the father, and he was saying, and he's thanking God that he has something now. And he's not worried about uh, next year or after because at least he is getting uh, water for sanitation and also for irrigation, uh, irrigating. I think that's the rewarding part. When you focus on people uh, through what you do, um, then you know the motivation comes from that, that ultimately what you do helps people. Since water is an issue, in the Hara region. We undertook a pilot project with them uh, to evaluate availability and access to water and drill a few shallow wells for 
uh, farm communities to utilize. It is the foundation, the Water for Food uh, Institute is the, the funding is the foundation really for the work that we hope will be um, our career focus.